Hello farmers and welcome to this episode by Zim Farmer. Well, today we are going to be talking about brooding. What is brooding? Brooding is the management of chicks from one day old to about four weeks of age. And it involves the provision of the heat, feeds, water and other necessary care during chicks early growing period. Before we go deep into brooding, we are going to talk about vaccination. Well, vaccination is the most essential and important part when it comes to port rearing. So, we are not to, we are not going to go deep into vaccination, but we are only we are going to talk about um, a vaccination program. You know, the most the most important vaccines that you need to give to your chickens, or is it turkeys or chickens, any poultry, any poultry that you are keeping at your farm. So. Don't go away, stay tuned, remember to hit that subscribe button so that you won't miss any other videos and turn on that notification bell so that you'll be warned each and every time when Zimfama posts any video. So what we are going to do, we, 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 we will briefly talk about vaccination and then in the future we're going to make videos about vaccination, you know, poultry diseases management and vaccination, but today we're going to be talking about brooding and you know, brooding needs well as you start taking care of your chicks you're going to need to vaccinate them to vaccinate them first so we're going to show you a vaccination guide or vaccination program that you might need to follow or you can even make yours but it must this is just a prototype that you can follow if you want to make yours but these are the most important vaccines that you need to use on your chickens stay tuned don't go anywhere well, welcome back farmers now let's get let's get into the into the vaccination program that we have for you well you can all well, you can make your own vaccination program but you can even follow the one that we are going to show you right now okay this this the vaccine program is divided into part into two parts the low risk areas and the high risk areas you know high risk areas for newcastle and gumboro diseases these those though those are the most two dangerous viruses that usually affect your chickens so the um the vaccination guide is the one which is being shown on this on your screen right now you can follow it and uh, i promise that you you will have you run a successful project a poultry farm so on nature day you can use a cosplay spray for newcastle disease and infectious bronchitis then on day 10 you can also use you can put the vaccine in drinking water or you can even use a cosplay for Newcastle disease. Then day 14, you can vaccinate for Gomboro disease in, in drinking water. Then day 18, day 18 again, you can vaccinate for Gomboro disease for drinking water. Then Newcastle disease, drinking water on day 21. This this program is for low risk, therefore it's for low risk areas. And then there's and then this one, the and the program that is being shown on the screen right now is for high risk areas, areas mostly affected by Newcastle and Gumboro diseases. Well, on HR day one, vaccinate with Newcastle, vaccinate the Newcastle disease and the infectious bronchitis and the infectious bronchitis bronchitis. And uh, day eight, vaccinate for Newcastle disease again. You can use a cosplay. spray. Then day 12, vaccinate for Gumboro disease in drinking water. Then day 17 or 18 or 19, you can vaccinate for Gumboro disease using drinking water. And then day 21, you can use a cosplay for Newcastle disease. Uh, those are the two vaccination programs that you can follow. You can, or you can make your own vaccination program depending on the effect of the viruses in your area. Now that you know how to vaccinate your chickens, let's talk about breeding. Brooding can be classified into natural and artificial brooding. One needs to have skills in raising day old chicks. This is because broiler chicken farming involves raising day old chicks until they reach market weight of 2 plus or minus kgs at about 7 to 8 months. In order to keep warm, one needs to have heating equipment such as brooder lamps, heating jikos, brooder heating pots ordinary bulbs and gas brooder lamps and, and many more 
Eight provisions can be through electricity, through broader lamps, charcoal, through jikos and broader pots, and kerosene through kerosene lamps, gas through gas brooders. Now, now let's talk about natural brooding. Natural brooding basically involves um, the help of broody hens after hatching uh, up to three to four weeks of age, you know. Just when when a chicken hatch, you give them to their um, to their mother so that they can nature they can nurture them, keeping them warm, finding them food, and also the, and all other things. Natural brooding is not for industries or for people who are who are that much who are deep into hatching into chicken hatching. You if you are deep into chicken hatching, you know when you array a lot of birds and you have a lot of eggs, you're gonna need to use artificial brooding because natural brooding involves when the mother takes care of her of her of her chicks. Equipment used for artificial brooding are called brooders. These are composed of three elements which are electrical, gas and solid. Then in electrical we'll be using those electrical lamps, then in the gases we'll be using gases like natural gases, methane, liquid fuel. Uh, and then in solid fuel, we'll be using coal and uh, wood and also other materials that you can use for heating. Now, let's get deep into brooding. Uh, before we get deep into brooding, guys, remember, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit to turn on that notification bell so that you won't miss any videos any videos that we make each and every single day and post on our channel share tell a friend don't forget to like and leave a comment if you have any questions you can add them on the on the comment on the comment sections we have our contact details on the descriptions below you can contact us for more info on whatever project that you are doing if you need help if you are facing any troubles when it comes to farming we cover every field and farming every single fuel there's no fuel that is left out now getting back into brooding during brooding one can use a combination of brooding equipment for example i use charcoal as a source of heat during the day and electricity during the night it all depends on your preferences one also needs to keep the brooder flow warm by putting a layer of dry hood chippings this also help to absorb chicken droppings thus ensuring that the brooder is dry at all times never use sawdust guys and um, always put wood chippings or shavings sawdust is too fine that chicks can mistake it for feed and this can lead to death of the chicks always always shave the wood always shave the wood chippings before using it in the brooder spray the shavings before the chicks arrive for 200 beds for 200 beds or less use infrared bulb to provide warmth for a thousand beds or more use infrared bulbs and jiko to increase warmth because those chicks they need a lot they, they need heat as they during the brooding processes right when bringing in your beds you must replace the whole chippings to minimize spread of infections and disease transmissions you know you must change everything vaccinate everything and um, you know spray everything you must quarantine the place for at least two weeks then you bring in your new chicks in there use small amounts of wood chippings in the brooder um, five to seven inches deep you know like five to inches five to seven inches deep as a rule of thumb you know the thumb rule you know like it must at least be the size of your thumb the brooder area should be ready to will be ready at least three hours before the chicks arrive. This will help in obtaining optimum temperatures. You know you must heat it first and prepare it, prepare everything, the heating and everything for at least three hours. Then you put in your chicken, your your chicks. Then also, um, also avoid drinking water for at least three hours before introducing feed. You know before you know give them water first before you introduce your feed you need to add vitamins and liquid paraffin to drinking water vitamins for chicks are important as they help the chicks to gain weight faster overcome stress due to handling as they are transported from the hr to the brooder so remember you must add vitamins you must add vitamins in the in the water so that your 
to reduce stress because stress stress can kill each and every chick you know they they you, you you'll be buying losses only and liquid paraffin is also imported during feed transitions that is from chick mesh to grower mesh grower meshes to layer meshes keep the brooder temperature within the range of 30 degrees to 35 degrees decreasing to four degrees per week for up to three weeks okay this is just simple mathematics guys you must remember I'm, I am going to say I'm going to say it again and uh, explain it a little bit the brooding room must be kept to at least 30 to 35 degrees and you must decrease the temperature by four degrees every week until it reaches to up to three weeks you know 35 degrees then the next week it must be 31 degrees then the next week minus four degrees again next week minus four degrees again until they reach and until it reaches up to three weeks then after two weeks the chicks begin to acquire the ability to regulate their own temperature since they have started to have feathers also there is increased feed intake and general activity one needs to expand the brooder space as the chicks grow to avoid overcrowding which can lead to the death and poor feed intake by some of the chicks due to due to in uh, inaccessibility in a inaccessible feeders and drinkers you know? because when you when brooding you must um, you must prepare a small a small brooder unit we'll talk about the brooder unit how to construct it and then um, put your chicks in that brooder unit heat it heating it uh, and there must be availability of water and feed and then after two weeks as your chicken grow you must expand that you must expand your brooding unit because they would have grown and uh, as you heard earlier if you don't expand there will be poor food in poor feeding intake and um, poor accessibility of feeders due to poor accessibility of feeders and drinkers right by four weeks the chicken should have occupied the whole brooder the chicks at this age are well covered by feathers and can be able to withstand more variable environmental temperatures excessive noise from chicks in an I mean, excessive noise from chicks is an indicator that something is wrong. It, in most cases, this is due to inappropriate temperature. Chicks that are not warm enough will usually huddle together near the heat source. They will also have wet droppings characterized by wet, dirty, pasted veins. In addition, they will be stressed exhibit uh, and they will be stressed they will be stressed exhibit retardation and also have increased mortality overheated chicks will, che will, will chirp noisily and continuously lie protest with their with their necks with their necks stretched on the floor drink more water and move away from the heat source they will display poor flock and in severe cases there will be deaths uh, basically that this is basically everything when it comes to brooding there are just there are a few notes that have been left out and we will talk more about we will, we, we will talk more about them in the future videos but basically this is everything that you need to know when it comes to brooding the only thing that's left is how to brood how to build your brooder house so these are these are the basics when it comes to brooding your chicks well that's all that we have for you today remember hit that subscribe button to learn more about Broiler farming, you know, everything when it comes to farming, we'll be making videos like this, lectures every single day. Uh, don't forget to turn on that notification bell, tell a friend, contact us, leave a comment on the comment section.